It has been several weeks now since Apple introduced the new app Freeform and I gave you the two-part masterclass already at the start. And if you haven't checked that one out, here are the links. But since then, I have found several new ways to do stuff, new tips, new tricks, new advanced features for you to share. These will make your Freeform usage way more productive and way more fun, trust me. So, without further ado, here are eight new tips and tricks which I haven't mentioned in my Freeform Masterclass Part 1 and 2 or which I just touched briefly and which need more introduction. So, follow me now. So, here I am in Freeform. One thing I learned is, you know, let's go for some shapes that we want to connect here. Let's go for three things and... One thing that I haven't mentioned in the master course, but I learned new is if you enter a connector, you connect things like this one here, right? There is an even, I would say faster or different way to do this. You can select two objects and then you select the connector and the connection appears automatically. That is new. The other thing I, I learned with the connector is if you just, you have these three dots on a connector. The two blue dots are connecting the two objects. The green dot you can move to edit the shape or the curvature of the connector. But if you click on the line itself, you will move the connector with the two connecting objects. That's interesting. So um, if you want to move the two objects which are connected by a connector, you can just move the connector and the two objects will stay in the position relative to each other. I really like that. Next, with the connectors. You can, of course, if you want to edit the color or thickness, you can do that here. And let's say, you know, I want to have basically always a five point and um, a blue connector. That should be my standard, not the, not the black one. I can do that and I can also Add, of course, the arrows. Let's do this one here. And then I can say with a three dot menu, I can go for style and save insert style. Unfortunately, if I enter a new connector, only the color and the thickness are preserved, not the arrows, and also not if you do another connection style. So if I want to have this type of connection style and I create a new connector, you see, it's again creating a curved connector. So you can only save the thickness and the color as, and the style, the, the style itself, you know, that you have the, the line style. This you can serve as, a, as an insert style. Unfortunately, not the arrows and not the connection type itself. The next tip I have is about images. Now you can add images to Freeform, you know that. And what you can do is, of course, you can resize it, you can crop it, you know, you can mask it. We've all done that. An easy thing, but what often gets overlooked is you can, of course, preview it. You can open it in preview. You can't do a lot here. You can, you can save it, you can copy it, you can print it, you can send it via email to someone else. But what you can also do is, you can use the standard functions of iOS to select text. So what you can do is, if you go into preview, you have this little um, icon in the lower right. And if you click on that one, all of the text gets selected. And of course, if I just say, you know, I just want to have, I just want to have, for instance, this text here. Time it takes a hacker to brute force your password in 2022. I can just copy it over here and, you know, create a text from that one. And that's it. The next tip I have is under the three dot menus is that you can have shadows and round corners for images. And I really like very often to have round corners. You can deselect it or select it. It gives some nice, you know, um, flair to the image. That's, that's a quick one. The next tip I have is about texts. You see, when you, when you select the text field, you see these two, dot, two blue dots and the a green dot. And it's interesting, if I select now the blue dot, no, if I now select the green dot, I will change the font size by dragging. 
But if I go for the blue dot, you know, the font size will not change, but I will create break. So the, the text will flow. I will, I will just create line breaks here. The green one will, will resize the text and the blue one will not resize the text. Since we are here about text right now, you can also use the scribble commands, of course. So I, if I just open up the, the pencil tool with the A, I can just enter a text field and I can just start to write. Ah, you see, um, my, my iPad is, is propped you know, a bit in 45 degree angle here, so it's not very good for handwriting. So I, I wanted to write true. There we are. You can also do commands like, you know, delete. So yeah, you can use the scribble commands. The next thing, if you're in a text field, you have the AA menu. And in the AA menu, so that is the, um, the format menu, you have another AA button. This is the font selector. Yes, you can use fonts on an iPad here. And you can even have font families here. For instance, if I click on Futura, you see that I have different types of Futura. So I can now say, you know, I wanna have this one here in bold. Futura bold and it changes the font and the, um, the, the type. What you can also do is you can do this not only for the, for the complete text. That is really interesting. So if I click on this AA and, and here, this will change the text within the text field. But wait a second. For instance, if I select the words brute force, brute force, I get at the bottom, now I get another AA and here I can select a font, for instance, let's change a totally different one. Let's go for impact. And you see, I can also do the colors and can do the, the, the size here. Or you can really get creative with fonts. By the way, this does not only apply to text fields, it also applies to shapes. So let's go for creating a shape here. I really do love the round rect. I tell you in a second why. And enter there some text here. And it's the same. If I select the, the shape itself, I have this text format menu and I can select here the font formula. Let's go for chalk, chalk duster. And uh, I can, of course, select, you know, colors and I can select the size. Let's do it a bit bigger here. And you can do the same th trick here. So if I select a text within a shape, I can say, um, you know, I want to have, I want to have this one in another color and even with another type of font. That's amazing. By the way, since we're talking about text fields, you know, within Freeform, you have these one here, these post-it notes, and they're really great, but they're a bit limited. First, a lot of you don't know this. So if I, if I enter text there, this is a note, and I select it here. I do have a, a format menu, but you know, you don't have a font option here. You have no font option here. You can only have the size and um, the indentation and so on, but you have no font menu here. And even if you go down here, you only have a size menu. So it looks like these little post-it notes, they only have the standard font for you. You can't en edit the font, right? Wrong. Watch out. You know, I, I go to this one here or to, the, to, to any text field that allows me to change the font. And then I copy the text and I paste the text, voila. And you know what's interesting? What I could do is I could even say, you know what, I want this one as my insert style. And what, watch what happens. Now I enter the next, oh, this is interesting. Watch what happens. This is, this is so crazy because normally this is life because normally what happens is I think this happens because I have two different um, fonts in the text. Watch what happens if I delete uh, the, the extra font and just leave the chalk duster font in here. And now let's go for this one here. This is just chalk duster and say again, style, save as insert style. And just let's create a new, yeah. And you see it here already. Now, this is a new note. Now, 
all of my post-its will use Chalk Duster as a font and the font size is now 24 instead of 18 point. So you can, you can actually adapt them, but it's a bit cumbersome. And actually, you know, I, I use the post-it notes in freeform, but I use them a specific way. And that is, I use them like post-it notes. So yeah, if I do have a field, for instance, like, like this, um, this image here, I add this post-it notes as a comment. And what I also do is, since you have only a limited amount of colors, you only have uh, seven colors, I define for myself, you know, what the color mean. For instance, a yellow might be only an information, blue might be to add something, red might be to, to, to change something urgently. So you define that for yourself. If you're working in a group, you define a color for a person. So let's say, you know, Peter is red, Tom is yellow, and I myself choose blue. So then in a team, everyone knows if it's a blue post-it that this is a comment by me, right? That's, that's one easy way to do it. Other than that, I very often when it comes to, to using text, not as a comment, like a post-it that I will remove once the task is done, but to have it as a structural element within this format, I normally don't use post-it notes. What I will do is I will use the round rectangle. And why? You see, for instance, there are not only the format limitations and color limitations, but also you can only resize it, you know, in a, in a square format. So you can't change, change the um, dimension of height and width or the, or the proportion. You can, of course, do that with a square. So I can, you know, you can, can really easy adapt it. And since I have the round rectangle, I, I love the round things, but if I don't want it, I can do it even more round, but I can do a square out of it. And um, I have way more options when it comes to font because I do have real font control here. And that's why I actually prefer very often, and, and of course you can enter text just like this is a text field. You can enter text just like, like you can with post-it note here. And that's why I very often use round rect if I, if I wanna have text fields within a free form. And I reserve myself the post-it notes for comments that I add to structural elements, if that makes sense to you. Another great tip that I have is selecting objects. Now, what I've shown you in the master course is that you can of course select by either, you know, clicking here, selecting one element or holding the finger and drag selecting. But what is also a very nice way built within Freeform is that you just tap on any place in the background and then you have select objects. And what you then can do is you can just quickly select or you can just drag. You don't need to wait when, when you are in the select mode. You don't have to wait for dragging, you know, it just works immediately. And I really, really like this. It's, it's very easy and fun to do this and select and deselect something like this one here. And once, you've, you know, once you select all your elements, you then select done. And then you can either say, for instance, you group them or you can delete them and whatever. So this is a quick selection. Another selection option is to use several fingers. So um, I'm, I'm clicking and holding on this note and then I'm clicking and selecting the next note and the next note and the next note. So with a second finger. And uh, that's also a quick selection. The next step that I have is with, with the pencil is if you go to the pencil palette, you have these pencil tools. If you go to the drawing tools, you know, these one, two, three, four drawing tools, you see that they have these little bars, color bars. So of course you see which color I selected. Let's go for this one. And if I go for green, it immediately selects green. But what I find interesting, if I click and hold on it or tap and hold on it, you have these five thickness levels. And if I increase the thickness here, you see that the bar increases. So you, with, with a glance, you see here how thick my pen is, you know, by just taking a look at the bar. And of course, if I say, you know, I would just want to have it a bit more opaque, then you have the little number here and you see that this pencil right now has now 45% opacity, so which makes it very nice. And it's the same, it's the same thing here with the opacity of the, of the drawing tool of this, which are very often used for, for backgrounds. And the next thing is if I click and hold on the eraser, you can select the size of the eraser. Now this is not shown, not reflected here on the eraser itself. If you, if you use the so-called pixel eraser, you, you have the 
option to either use a pixel eraser or an object eraser. Now, what is the difference in pixel eraser? I show it to you. Let's, let's go for this one here, the medium one. The pixel eraser just really is something like an eraser in Photoshop where you can really do fine works. And if you go into it, you can really, really work very fine here. If I select the object eraser, you see then it gets this little X here. That means with one touch, the complete object is erased. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you learned something fun and something new. If so, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to be informed when my next video comes out, also hit the subscribe button. As much as I like Apple's Freeform app, for some use cases, Apple has created an even more powerful app, which you might know but haven't used in that way before. If so, check out the video that's about to come up right now. So, see you then. Bye.